Hello everyone and welcome to the new video on this channel. In this video I will show you how you can make Discord bot directly on the ESP32, so stay with me after the intro. For those who are not familiar with Discord, Discord is a VoIP, instant messaging and digital distribution platform designed for creating communities. Users communicate with voice calls, video calls, text messaging, media and files in private chats or as a part of communities called servers. Servers are a collection of persistent chat rooms and voice chat channels. Discord runs on any platform like Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, iPad OS, Linux as well as in web browsers. As of July 2019, there are over 250 million users of this software. So what are the Discord bots? Discord bots are something like AI that can perform a number of useful automated tasks and Discord commands on your server, such as welcoming new members, moderating content and banning rule breakers. You can use Discord bot commands to add music, memes, games and other content to your server. To be less abstract, bots are special user accounts on Discord which we can create for free and then with using authentication token and some code we can automate our bot to do some useful stuff like auto respond on some user messages or check if some user spamming in channel and make desired actions like mute or kick that user from server etc. To be more specific. What if we adapt bot to the IoT device? Well, then with the messages from Discord channels we can, for example, control home devices, or we can collect some sensor data from device environment and push it to the Discord channel, etc. Basically, in that scenario we can use Discord as totally free communication layer. Stuff becomes more powerful with the fact that Discord communicates with clients through the permanent web socket channels, which provides bidirectional, real-time and low latency communication with bots or IoT devices in this case. That was the theory. Let's go now with more concrete stuff. For establishing Discord bots on the ESP32, I have recently made this ESP IDF component. Down here in README section, you can find more about how to use this library. Basically, it's like any other ESP IDF component, so we need just to add it into components folder of our project. If you are new to ESP IDF, that is a framework for developing applications for ESP devices in C or C++ programming languages. You can find several videos on my channel about installation ESP IDF on Windows, Ubuntu Linux or on the WSL2 platform. All the links are in description of this video. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use WSL2 platform. I need to mention here that because library is in early release state, it does not provide all possible bot features. There is already most of them like sending and receiving messages, getting roles or channels, checking user permissions, react to messages, downloading attachments and so on. Ok, let's go to project setup. Here I have prepared fresh ESP IDF project with the code which use example connect function for easier way of connecting to local network complete project that is gonna be written in this video is available in description down below. First we need to add ESP Discord component, so with CD components go inside of components folder. If we go to ESP Discord repository, down here we can find commands for adding component into project. First command is for cloning and we should use it if our project is not github repository. And in other case, when our project is github repository, in that case we should add component as github submodule. Because my project is not github repo, I'm going with first command. After the cloning we can proceed with next step. Discord establish communication with bots over the secured protocols. So because of that we need to generate SSL certificates for our device. Library contains already prepared shell script for generating certificates. So make sure that you are still in components folder and execute next command. Cool. Certificates are generated so we can continue further. Go to project folder with cd dot dot command. With command idf.py, 
set target ESP32 inform compiler that our project is intended for ESP32 chip. Open configuration menu with idf.py menu config. And here we need to make some configurations. First, go to example connection configuration. Here I will enter my wireless network name and password. After Wi-Fi login information, I will select that I don't want to obtain IPv6 address, so only IPv4 will be obtained. Ok, go back with escape key. Go to component config and all the way down go to discord item. For now you will find here only one configuration item and that is the bot authentication token. This token we can get from the discord. But before, we need to register bot on the Discord and add it to our server. Let's get to that quickly. Open discord.com slash developers. Under the application section, click on new application and enter the name. I will go with ESP IDF bot and click create. Now, when the application is created, go to bot item and click on add bot. We need to confirm here that we want to add bot to the application. Ok, now when we have created bot, we can modify it a little bit. For the username I will go with ESP32 and choose some nice picture. Uncheck this option in order to make bot publicly invisible. Click save changes. In this moment bot is ready, but we need to invite them to our server. I hope you are already have created your server. If you don't, you can go here, click on this plus icon and click on create my own server. All next options are straightforward and easy to follow. Ok, let's now invite bot to our server. Click on OAuth. For the scope, choose bot and down here we can assign desired permissions to bot. I will choose that my bot can view channels, send messages, read message history and add reactions. That is enough for now. Go up here and copy this authorization link. Paste it to the new browser tab. Here we need to choose to which server we need to invite our bot. I have only one server so I will choose it. Click continue and then click authorize to confirm previously chosen bot permissions. And if we go now to our server we can see that bot is now a member of our server. When we have bot ready, now we can obtain the authentication token. Go to bot section again and by clicking on this button, copy the bot token. We can now go back to our ESP32 configuration menu and paste the token. Click S for saving and with escape leave the configuration menu. Ok, I hope you are still with me. I know that this seems like painful process but at least it needs to be done just once. Now we can finally start with coding. Ok, before anything else we need to include discord.h to our project. Inside of main function I will call discord underline create function to initialize a bot. This function requires one argument which represent pointer to bot configuration. So I will create configuration instance with only one property and that is the bot intents. Bot can have multiple intents but I will say that my bot have intent to only operate with messages. What actually intents means for our application? For example if we set intents for only messages that means that discord will just send to us events relating to messages. Like when messages created updated or deleted, which means that the more intents we provide, the more frequent a communication channel will be between Discord and our device. Ok, now when we have configuration, we can pass its pointer to create function. After the initialization, we need to call Discord login function to actually login bot into our Discord server. This function requires one argument and that is the handle of the bot. Where we can get this handle? Well, if we take a look on the create function signature, we can see that this function returns exactly what we need. I will create a bot handle as a global variable regarding to project scope. And now we can pass the handle to the login function. That is all what we need for now. With idf.py build, let's build the project and check if there is any errors. Nice. 
there is no errors, so we can flash and monitor app with command IDFX all COM6. If you are not familiar with this IDFX command, I have talked more about it in the video about setup ESP IDF under WSL2, but shortly it gives us ability to flash and monitor ESP IDF apps under WSL environment because WSL natively does not support USB devices. Ok, after the ESP32 runs the application, just a little bit later we can see that our bot becomes online in Discord server, which means that our code works as it should. Great, what we can do now? Let's create a simple bot which will echo back any messages that he received. ESP Discord library runs in separated task and it does not block the main task, so which means that for any event raised in Discord, this library will invoke the user event handler. To register our event handler, we need to call Discord register events function. This function receives multiple arguments. First is bot handle, second argument indicates which events we need to observe. I will say that I want to observe any Discord event. Third argument is user defined event handler function. And third is argument which will be passed to event handler. We can left it as null. Now we can define event handler. Event handler has prototype as any other ESP IDF event handler and it looks like this. Only what we are interested in in this moment are last two parameters and that is the type of the event and event data. First what I will do is to cast event data to discord event data type. After that with switch block we can check which event is raised. Because we are gonna to make echo bot we are maybe interested to events like when the bot is connected to server, when new message is received and maybe when the bot is disconnected from server. In connected event we can just print some warning message. In connected event we can print informations about our bot. With every event we will receive different data type. Particularly this event will provide us information about currently bot session. And from the session we can read bot informations. Before using session type we need to import discord slash session dot h file. Now we can cast data pointer to the discord session type. When we have session, we can simply just print out the session user informations, and that is the informations about our bot. Ok, let's check now what we have so far. Again, with the command idfx all com6 build flash and monitor application. Ok, as we can see here, our event handler is triggered, and we got correct informations about our bot. Nice. Let's now implement message received event. As I already mentioned, every event will provide us different data type. Like as connected event provides session, this event will provide us a data of type message. So let's include discord slash message.h file. Now we can cast our data pointer to the message type. From the message instance we can get a lot of informations. And with this part of code I'm gonna to dump message to the terminal. This code will print infos like if received message is from server or it is a DM, sender info, if sender is a bot or regular user, from which channel and server message has arrived, and of course the content of the message. Let's now construct the echo message content. We can use this extend string cat function to merge multiple strings into one. For using this function we need to include estr.h file. So I will construct message like hey then the name of the user you wrote and then the content of the original message surrounded with ticks which means that original message content will be inside of inline code block. When we have content we can instantiate the discord message. Property content will be the content which we already made, and the channel in which we want to send echo message will be the same as channel of the original message. Now we need just to call discord message send function and provide three arguments. First is bot handle, 
second is pointer to message which we want to send, and third argument is pointer to message in which will be stored the informations about sent message created on the Discord. Because I don't want to receive any informations about message stored on the Discord, I can just send null for this argument. If we want, for example, to check if message is successfully sent, we can surround function call with parentheses and check if it returns ESP underline OK. Here we can print that message is successfully sent, and here if message sending process have failed. That's it. Let's check what we have made so far. IDFX all COM6. OK, bot is connected to server. Let's try to send some message to the channel which is visible to bot. This chat channel is OK because it is visible to all members of my server. As we can see, when our message is sent, bot immediately send the ecom message back. If we take a look on terminal, we can see the informations about received message sent by us, as well as feedback if bot have succeeded to send the ecom message back. Pretty awesome, isn't it? We can here now for example check if message content start with some specific characters, and according to that control some home devices or something like that. And yes, don't forget to call a free function here to release the eco content string because this function returns pointer to dynamically allocated string in memory. Everything else will be automatically released by Discord library and you don't need to worry about it. Basically that's it, but for the sake of demonstration I will just quickly go through this second example where we can check permissions of the user who sent the message. As you can see here, like in previous example, in message received event I have print out the message informations, and after that with function discord member has permissions, we can check does the member who sent the message has a administration permission in particular discord server. Last argument of this function is pointer to the boolean variable where the result of the checking will be stored. As well as any other public function of this library, this one will as well return error status, so we can check if something bad was happened. Later we can construct some feedback message about permissions and set it back to the user. Ok, let's check this. I will send some test message to the bot and wait for the response. Bot reply to me that I'm admin, and that is because I have this owner role which has a administration permissions in my server. Let's remove now this role from my account and test it again. Now bot has recognized that I don't have any role which has administration permissions. This can be very useful if you want to create bot which will be able to control some home devices only if user with specific role sends that control command. That's it for this video. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this library and for what you gonna to use it. Do not hesitate to leave some suggestions as well as constructive criticism. In next video I will show you one practical example what can be built by using this library, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and till the next time, see ya!